Hello everyone, my name is Twisted Dance, your favorite member of the FBI watch list. I'm actually kinda happy, which is weird because it's for a technology that I initially didn't think I would care too much about, which is AMD's fluid motion frames. Now I did a video earlier kinda talking about it, and the thing is, my overall take on it, and not just FSR 3, but also DLSS 3, is that I believe the best use case for frame generation is with CPU bottleneck games. Listen, I have a Ryzen 9 7900X, alright? I paid a lot of money to build this PC, especially back when these CPUs first came out and the AM5 platform was pretty expensive, they still kind of are, but even with this crummy ass CPU, I cannot walk around Kamurocho without the frame rate dropping as low as 110 FPS, simply because the Dragon Engine is just that taxing on your CPU. And yeah, I know, I get it, spoiled PC gamer complaining that they're not getting 2000 frames per second, but look. I'm just asking for this game to run at 165 FPS matching the refresh rate of my monitor. Hell, I would even be willing to compromise with 120 FPS, but even that's too much for this game. However, this might become an issue of the past with the upcoming Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth because it could potentially feature FSR 3 and hopefully if AMD continues to improve on the smoothness of this tech and ideally enable variable refresh rate, then I'm pretty interested in seeing how the game will run with frame gen. It might take me a while before I get the chance to test the PC port because I don't buy Yakuza games on PC day one. I tend to buy the PS4 or 5 copy in order to own a physical copy, but I'm sure later down the line, especially if it gets released on GOG, I'll probably purchase this and see how it works. I'm also interested in seeing how FSR 3 will affect the console experience. I'm wondering if we'll see more cases of 120Hz mode if it's possible for them to push the numbers using frame gen, especially because realistically that's the only way that this technology can be reliable on consoles. I doubt this will be used to push games with high fidelity to play at a lock 60, because FSR 3 is pretty shit when you play games with a base frame rate below 60 FPS, not only is the input latency higher, but the interpolation is gonna look comparatively worse when it has less frames to work on. Maybe by the time this becomes widely adapted, this technology will have improved to the point where this is optional, but I highly doubt that when even AMD recommends having a base frame rate of 60. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Regardless, as far as PC games, personally, unless I'm in these CPU limited situations, I would rather just tone down the graphic settings or even just use an upscaler. Hell, I would even be willing to use FSR 1 if I had the chance. As a fighting game dude, frame time and input latency matters a lot which makes me inherently skeptical towards these frame interpolation technologies, whether it's from AMD or Nvidia. However, there is one use case that I can't quite ignore and that is emulation. Now, besides the natively integrated FSR 3, there's also the driver built-in fluid motion frames that supposedly works on all games that use the X11 and 12. This still hasn't been officially shipped into the main Adrenaline branch, but for several weeks AMD has released a beta driver which initially only worked with RDNA 3 because AFMF, much like Anti-Lag Plus, are part of the HyperRx software suite which is exclusive to RDNA 3. However, not so long ago AMD also decided to provide support for RDNA 2 which is great since I have a 6000 series card and I'm sure a lot of people do. Now of course older generations are still not supported unfortunately and at this point I doubt AMD will even bother with that. Although keep an eye on modded drivers because those guys seem to care a lot more about supporting older cards than AMD ever will. But anyway, I had my chance to try out fluid motion frames and I, I do think it's pretty impressive given how the frames are being generated on a driver level, the end results are honestly pretty impressive. I was even able to double the frame rate of games with lock 60s. However, the coolest aspect of AFMF was the fact that it also works with emulators, which to me, that matters a lot more. Because with PC games, you can tone down settings, you can disable VSync to unlock the frame rate, but with emulators, you might be lucky to find games where the community has developed frame rate patches, but in general, it's not something that you should come in with the expectation that you're gonna emulate games at whatever frame rate you want. At the end of the day, aside from these games being so old, they're originally developed for systems with a specific frame rate target, so trying to increase the max frame rate may end up resulting in the game doubling the playback speed, so it's not very reliable, which is why I think that AFMF can prove to be a fairly reliable method for increasing the frame rate. However, there are some pretty big caveats. Now one of the things to take into consideration about AFMF is that this is primarily meant to work with DX11 and 12. It doesn't work with older DirectX versions and it also doesn't work with other APIs. 
at least supposedly. When the beta driver was first released, people actually did find a way to get this working with Vulkan, but unfortunately when they shipped the second version of the driver that enables support for RDNA 2, they disable all support for Vulkan, which is a real shame because most emulators either use OpenGL or Vulkan. I can think of at the top of my head like maybe two emulators that support DirectX, which are Dolphin and PCSX2. Every other emulator that I use don't support DirectX, which isn't even a bad thing. To be clear, I think it makes sense to use OpenGL and especially Vulkan because of how much more open they are and allow for better portability since DirectX is an exclusive Microsoft API. But unfortunately, this means that the number of emulators that we can use to test full motion frames is very limited. Or at least that was the case, because very recently, and this is actually one of the things that made me pretty happy, AMD updated their driver and now you can actually use AFMF with Vulkan. So I've had the time to test out other emulators besides PCSX2, like RPCS3. And well, I, the results, they're, they're, they're pretty mixed. Like here's the thing, in terms of motion artifacts, and maybe this is just me because I'm not very attentive. I personally don't notice any like serious ones. I'm sure if I glued my eyes to the screen, slowed down the playback speed to 0.3 times and zoomed in at like 700%, I have no doubt in my mind that I would find some artifacts. Maybe some ghosting, I don't question that, especially because I noticed that when I played Forspoken, which had the quote unquote better version of FSR 3. However, generally speaking, I don't notice any glaring artifacts. Most of the times, the issues that I encounter have to do with frame times and definitely some screen tearing. But beyond that, it's not often that I notice major artifacts, which I think is pretty impressive. However, I think I know one of the main reasons for why that's the case. You see, with fluid motion frames, you generally tend to expect around double the performance. Usually lower because the frame generation does have a performance penalty, which reduces the base frame rate. So you actually tend to get close to twice the performance, but not exactly two times the frame rate when you disable AFMF. If you're playing a game with a lock frame rate, it actually tends to be exactly two times, but unfortunately, you can find yourself in scenarios where the frame rate will significantly drop, and that's because AFMF doesn't handle fast movements very well. If there's too much movement or visual noise, this will tank the generated frames. And from what I understand, because the interpolated frames are being generated on a driver level, they don't have direct access to a game's motion factors. The opposite of FSR 3, which does have it and it has no issues interpolating frames during fast movements. AFMF on the other hand, does have trouble. Now, how detrimental to the gaming experience will vary quite a bit depending on the game, but at least for me, Ultimate Ninja Storm Generations was completely unplayable. We're talking about a game that targets 60 FPS, but for the most part, I'm seeing the performance fluctuating within 40 frames, 30s when it feels like it, hovering in the 50s to 60. It, it's really bad. But a game like FIFA Street 12 stays at a pretty consistent 120 FPS during gameplay. Granted, you might not truly appreciate it because depending on the camera angle, the players might be in such a long distance that you're not gonna feel the added fluidity as much. There might be a little bit of screen tearing here and there, but it definitely is playing at 120 FPS, which is, in my opinion, a better experience than what I'm getting if I'm playing the original PlayStation 3 version, which I do actually have by the way. Even Assassin's Creed 2, a game that I expected the drop frames to be very common, and it definitely is. But not as much as I think I initially predicted, because during fight scenes, it actually didn't do too much of a bad job trying to stick to 60 FPS. Now, for some reason, I haven't been able to get Yuzu to work with fluid motion frames. I'm still trying to figure out what could be causing the issue. My Windows 11 build does seem to be having some driver problems really ever since I installed this beta driver. So this is something that I might need to sort out by myself when I have a bit more time. PCSX2, no issues. I'm able to play GTA Liberty City Stories with AFMF on top of the 60 FPS patch, which allows me to play this game at 120 FPS. If you're willing to also download the high resolution patches, you can get a pretty decent experience with the game. Ever wonder what it felt like to play the PlayStation 2 Ultimate Ninja games at 60 FPS? Well, now we have a smidge of that opportunity, although I will say that for Ultimate Ninja 5, you will need to play the Japanese version because that's the only one that runs natively at 30 FPS, unlike the PAL version, which is the only one that exists as far as Western releases, which only gives you 25 FPS, 
So you will only be able to target 50 FPS, which is not an amazing experience. Regardless, it's actually pretty fun to experiment. This technology I do feel like has potential. And with it being open source, I have high hopes that the community over time will better understand it. And who knows, we might see this getting supported on Linux. We know this tech works with Vulkan, so there's no excuse. AMD, don't weasel your way out of this. I'm not gonna dog on you for only making this exclusive to Windows at this moment since this is still in beta and I'm sure you're more worried about getting this to work with DX11 and 12, especially since most PC users are running Windows 10 or 11. I completely understand that's your priority and I don't even really blame you for that. However, when this eventually makes it to the Adrenaline branch, you gotta get this tech to work with Linux as well. Even if it takes some time before it's merged into the open source message drivers, even if it's purely a RADV experimental feature, that's still better than nothing. Additionally, and, and this, this is honestly the most important one, at some point, you gotta address the issue of the frame rate dips during fast movements. I don't believe this is meant to be permanent, I like to believe that they're completely aware that this is an issue, and it's mostly a temporary solution for the inevitable problem they're facing where the faster images change, the more difficult it is to interpolate frames accurately. And I want to believe that by the time this feature becomes official, they will have matured this tech enough and this will become less of an issue. So AMD, when the time comes, you need to get off your ass and tackle these issues. But, at least so far, I like what I'm seeing. And that's pretty much it. Goodbye.